Ah, you know what old Jack Burton always says at a time like this? I can take it. ま、and welcome back to the 38th episode of sludge cast of course you got sludge here and mark and our brothers from texas rj and ruben and this is actually technically take two we've been <laughs> jaw jacking for like the last 20 minutes about a specific yep. news article, which we're going to share with you guys in a moment. <laughs> but uh, Sludge, the genius that I am, uh, hit the play button on a recording software instead of record and wasn't paying any attention. So uh, the first take was great. Oh, you should have awesome. heard it, man. You I totally heard. just screwed it all right there, man. <laughs> my, that's my bad all the way. Um, so take two. And, of- and, as, and our, as RJ would say, and you've been an audio engineer how long? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Too long to make that type of mistake. So, yeah, but hey, you know what? Ruben and RJ were recording, so it was totally my beef yeah. on that one. But, this, uh, this is true. Oh, man. I, I think actually why, why he did that was because he was about to admit how he was such a fan of the 1998 no. Sony Godzilla. <laughs> not it was not at out. all. And man. then all of a sudden, oops, I hit no. play instead of record. That's what <laughs> no, it was no, finally no. coming it out. The truth was going to be you know what? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm looking at Mark, okay, at our table here he's, in the podcast room. He's looking at me. Behind me is the recording screen. He can see if it's recording yeah, or not. Yeah. This, this is Mark's true. Fault. This He's is definitely true. not blackmailing us right now. And it <laughs> yeah. totally didn't happen that he said that he loved Godzilla 1998. That's right. It's there. No. <laughs> not, at, not at all. All right. Well, well obviously, we are back. The, the uh, double father-son trio is back for another Godzilla film. This time around, we're doing Godzilla versus Mothra in 1992, the Heisei film. Uh, super excited about this one. Definitely enjoyed it more than the previous one. I mean, even though I'm a big Ghidra fan, um, we all are, but uh, we know what I thought about that last one. But uh, before we get started, uh, since we have closed down the main episodes, got two little quick news bits items for you. Um, we were obviously talking about this first one, so we'll let you listeners in on it now um, because we were <laughs> talking about our frustrations. Uh, about but, 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for too long. But uh, So a little quick rundown here. Obviously, if those of you who have not seen online, um, there has been some major changes as far as Warner Media goes. They uh, um, have replaced people. And they're they're downsizing, cutting departments, and things like that. Um, going all the way down to HBO Max, and so this is affecting a lot of things. There was concern even that it may be affecting um, the Snyder Cut film of Justice League. Um, they have clarified, nope, not at all. That will not touch that. Thank you, God, for that one though, because I would be really. Hey, mad. that's a that is. They're counting on that. That's the Mandalorian of HBO Max. Oh my gosh. Right that is there. that. Yeah. Yes. I mean, like that is the Mandalorian. I'm telling you from somebody who knows because Time Warner belongs to AT&T. I work for AT&T. We get internal emails. Nothing top secret. I'm not giving away anything top secret, but we give away. And, and then these internal emails, you know, it's kind of like, hey, you know, they're kind of like just giving us news. And that that Snyder cut is. The Mandalorian. It's the Stranger Things, for, you know, for Netflix. 
it, that that's what they're counting on. Oh man, I you can't know how wait. many people subscribe? How many people subscribe to the uh, to Disney just for the Mandalorian? I did just for that. You know, I subscribed yeah, and it was too. done. <laughs> After watching Mandalorian, yeah, and <laughs> yeah, and Netflix. Well, Netflix has a lot of good stuff, but Stranger Things was the huge hit for for Netflix, in in my opinion. Stranger Things you know, in Castlevania biggest, really has been the only reason I've watched anything on Netflix for the last four years. Yeah. There's been those two shows. Really? I've, I've watched a, quite a few shows on, on Netflix. I've watched well, you know, Stranger Things. You know, uh, Sherlock Holmes. I've watched that series. And uh, it, 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 there, there's stuff on there that I've seen. But Stranger Things by far to me, in my opinion, for what we enjoy, Stranger Things was... I would get it just for Stranger Things. Oh, well, we, me too. To Absolutely, it. it's the best thing yeah. Netflix has ever done in my in my opinion. Absolutely, but yeah. so anyway, so with Warner Media downsizing, and uh, yes, we are stoked for the the Snyder Cut. Um, but um, AT and T CFO um, John Stevens had mentioned um, at a conference yesterday um, in regards to the upcoming film slate for Warner Media that he's not certain. Where those are going, those are going to go. That further del- that there are going to be possible further delays in some of the titles, and the speculation and most of the, what um, I've been reading and seeing is that films like Wonder Woman 1984 and Dune will most definitely be affected by this. But there is a chance Godzilla vs Kong could have an another delay at this point, and we all were voicing our frustration. We've already went from March of this year to November of this year to now May of next year. If it is, you know, if they push it back again, I think it'll destroy the MonsterVerse unless it comes out being the absolute greatest giant monster film of all time. That's, I mean, it has to be that phenomenal yeah. uh, at this point if they delay and, and, it. And, and and I think, and in, in my opinion, I think that people will be so hungry to go back to the movies that it will actually be good for good for god for this movie in my opinion so so you think kinda, it'll benefit it i'm, I'm going to kind of disagree with you i i know what you're saying and you're right it, but at the same time people are going to be so hungry for it you know it was uh i don't know if you ever watched an eddie murphy show back ba- back in the 80s eddie murphy would do stand-up comedy on hbo or whatever it was pretty raw but on one of them it, it, he pretty much said that you know, if a starving man was given a cracker and he ate it, that he, that would be the best cracker he ever tasted because he hadn't had food for so long. That's true. I mean, you that's know? a valid so, point. You know, yeah. So, I mean, that skit was a lot about a lot more about that. But the bottom line is I'm just using that part of it because it's Eddie Murphy, of course. But basically, you know, he, he, he does the whole thing where the – the, the man eats the, the guy eats the cracker. Mm, that's the best cracker I ever had. Is it a Ritz cracker? Is it a Ritz? You know, because it's <laughs> yeah. just so good. You know, and I think that that when theaters find, it, you know, when we get back to even semi normal where we can go to theaters, and I think people are just going to go and flock back to the movies. And you know what? A perfect example of that is here. They closed everything down, you know, beaches were closed and everything. Man, as soon as they opened those beaches, people went and it was a regular, just not even a holiday, and the beaches were packed. Hence, we have, you know, 300 cases now a day <laughs> because everybody right. came down here. For yeah. the beaches, you know, That's we went true. from, you know, five cases of five cases, six cases, you know, a couple of people in the hospital to hundreds all of a sudden. And it all happened once the summer season, you know, opened up and and people started coming to the beach. They have since closed the beach again. But but thing is, as soon as things were loosened up, you know, same thing with the bars. Uh, I don't know about what they're doing in Tennessee, but in Texas, all bars are closed. And all of Texas. I have not checked to see what they're doing here. I'm not sure. I'm not sure here either. And so all the bars are closed because... It took three weekends of the bars being open and everybody rushed to the bars and crowded in there and cases started popping up, you know, yeah. little hot pockets. Well, I think and you're probably, so you're, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, once the theaters open up, yeah. 
Yeah, that, that, that could benefit it. Could. <clears throat> I still say keep. I it, think I think it, it could down. help. I can see your your point of view, but I can also see. I'm thinking it's going to be exact opposite. That people are just going to be hungry for it. I don't know. What do you think, RJ? What? <laughs> He's like, I already said He's this for right 20 there. minutes. Didn't you He's just sitting hear right me? next to me. He's sitting <laughs> right next to me. <laughs> okay, I'll be 100% honest. I may be in a Instagram fight right now. But anyway. <laughs> anyway um, yes. Um, paying $30 about the movies, right? No. Um, Okay. No, no, no. We're 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 talking about Godzilla versus Kong delay. Disrespecting the show. This is the monster. Let me stop now. <laughs> Look, man, that we've been talking great. about this for twenty minutes before. <laughs> He's already said what he wanted to say. Yeah. But uh, what That's we great. have here is a failure to communicate. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> If it makes oh. you feel better, I do this in all my digital meetings. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we're nothing special. You know, we're, yes. we're nothing special. So you can, you can never ask, mind about his opinion. <laughs> you can ask my uh, my D and D campaign people. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. This is the question: <laughs> Will Godzilla be delayed? Uh, once they open it to theaters. Will it help it or it, hurt it? Okay, it it depends on it depends on a lot of things. It depends on the on the it depends on it goes from person to person. I think honestly, I, some people are going to be all about it. Some people aren't. Um, it's kind of the same conversation. I didn't bring this up in the last uh, in the last time we talked about it, but um, I think it applies. Like there's there's kind of a big argument about you know right now because a lot of churches are closed down about whether or not people are going to return when things go back to normal. Like, are people yeah. going to go back to mass or are people going to go back to church type of thing? You know what I mean? Because because so many people have gotten used to not going. You know, usually people go every Sunday. You know what I mean? So there's kind of arguments being made in certain, you know, certain, you know, conservative circles are saying, oh, this is going to be terrible. And certain liberal circles are going to be like, no, this is going to be good because like, like you were saying, uh, Dad, like some people are going to be starved for it and are not going to go back. So I think it, it depends on 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 the person you know i think some people are going to be like uh are crazy for it and other people aren't so it, it just it just depends i think it varies from person to person so. how dare you go get it it's me <laughs> <laughs> well I, I think a lot of uh, if the theaters do come back open or people going to come to see it what as the studios go they're going to want to make the most money they can um yeah. What what all movies come out at the same time? You know, right. uh, you know you're going to fight back and forth with, you know, this film from that film. And so I think there's going to be a lot of things going on. Uh but I I think people will flock back to the theaters once they're open. Just a matter of There you go. How much you're going to spend? That's my man right there. <laughs> how much you going to how much you going to spend and how many different movies you're going to go see? How many times you're going to go? There's all right. that, all that stuff involved. Well, I know once the doors and open, there will and be calm, some apprehension. That's a little fight. There I'm will there. be apprehension a little bit. I think. Yeah, I didn't think yeah, about yeah. that, but yeah. So all yeah, right, we'll, we'll see. Ho- hopefully, they don't mm-hmm. delay it. Hopefully, but there's a chance yeah. we'll we'll find out as soon. Uh, hey, you know what? I'll, I'll I'll email the guy tomorrow. We'll take care of this right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Ruben, Ruben works for AT and T. He'll fix it all. <laughs> you let uh, you, you go holler at John. you like not. You can delay whatever. Mm-hmm. Don't delay God's orders. No, yeah, can't this. be. It's already been hey, done too much. I'm not going to bother <laughs> with John. I'm going All straight right, we got to one other you. piece of uh, news for you guys, oh. and then we'll um, jump right into the movie. And it's something really cool, special happening next month. If nobody has paid attention or seen, Marvel's bringing out a new comic book September 9th. Oh, I knew that and, was coming from you. Oh, super stoked. And it why? Why? Because it is... Rise of Ultraman, number one. Marvel <laughs> has gotten the rights to Ultraman and are bringing him, him bringing him stateside with a revamped story. I mean, they got a stellar crew of people working on this. Uh, Kyle Higgins and Matt Groom are working on this. Those dudes, they've worked on the Power Rangers comics. They've worked on Winter Soldier, Captain America, Self Made. You've got Francisco Mana, who's been doing a lot of the new Avengers books, Fantastic Four. He's doing a lot of the art on it. Michael Cho, who's worked on a lot of Captain America, has been doing the art on it. And the first episode's got a crap ton of variant covers. I'll buy every one. 
But of course, the one that if you go look online, the one's being promoted the most, of course, has been done by the legendary Alex Ross and just looks unreal. Um, so it's a six part mini series, depending on how it goes. They will. Marvel's already said, hey, if it sells great, we're going to just keep on rolling with it. Um, but right now it's a six part mini series called The Rise of Ultraman. Comes out September 9th. I'm stoked. I cannot wait to pick this up. So, I mean, I'm a huge Ultraman fan. Oh, man, so, I'll be there. I like Ultraman. I, I mean, I've always been there. Oh, Since man. I was a kid, I've been an Ultraman. I, mean, I just love Ultraman. It looks so good. From what I can oh, tell, yeah. right now, I think there's like six or seven variant covers for just the first issue. So, like, September 9th, I'm going to be coming home. Like, I'm going to get off work, run down to the comic shop, come home, and Sarah's like, what is all that? I'm like, it's the same comic book, but not never covers. She's <laughs> like, how much was that? You know, four bucks a book. <laughs> She's going to yell at me. Oh. But it'll be worth it, man. Because I will. I'll have to have every cover for, for this. You know, usually when it comes to variant covers for different books, I buy certain ones. You know, like when Spawn 300 came out. Yeah. Um, I knew exactly which variants. I mean, usually you want to get the smaller variants, the one in 25, where or the one in the hundreds are good, really good. You know I mean? Those ones where the way the ratio of those is, is um, if it's a one in 25, one in 25 comic book stores will get that cover. But if it's a one in 100 yeah. or one in 500, and it goes so on, one in 500, you yeah. know, goes in. So if you can go nab a one in 500, you're got a book wow. that's going to be worth a ton of money. You know what I mean? Because there's very few prints of that. So like when Spawn 300 came out, the, the one that had the lowest print run was the amazing Spider-Man 300 cover swipe because Tom McFarlane, of course created venom. Um, he did the cover and for amazing Spider-Man 300. Right. So spawn 300, it was the same cover, but with spawn instead of Spider-Man. So, yeah. I mean, I instantly went out and grab, I went to four different comic shops in Bristol, Johnson city and Kingsport. But if I could finally find one copy of it left, because everyone's like, no, 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 we got to get it. Cause and then I sold it for a pretty penny. So yeah. Because that's the only one of the four. Exactly. Anyways, Rise of Ultraman, September 9th. Super stoked about it. So got some news out of the way. Let's jump into the movie. We are ready for the next Heisei film, Godzilla versus Mothra. This one came out in December of 1992. And uh, kind of sticking to the formula that they've started with Godzilla's King Ghidra. They were trying to play it safe, bring back some more familiar faces from the Showa era by bringing Mothra. I mean, Ghidra did it very, you know, pretty successfully. There's probably no other bigger name in the Godzilla series other than Mothra um, as far as the the big ones, the big guns. And so they brought him back. Uh, pretty good crew actually returned. Actually, this was directed by Takao Okawara. Um, he, of course, he will go on to do the next Godzilla film, Godzilla vs. Meg Godzilla. He also does uh, Godzilla vs. Destroya, Godzilla 2000. Um, he did Yamato Takaru, which is also known as Orochi, the Eight-Headed Dragon, which is a phenomenal movie. Uh, but he started as the first assistant director for Return of Godzilla. So he returns to take on the full director's chair on this one. So uh, I think does a phenomenal job with it. <clears throat> and then, of course, it's written by Kazuki Omori. Kazuki Omori, of course, directed the previous two Godzilla films, Bailante and King Ghidorah. Um, so he wrote the story for this one. And uh, this one um, kind of takes a lot from the original 64 Mothra versus Godzilla. There's a lot of similarities to it. Yeah, it does. Um, a lot from it, a lot from the Mothra film. But in this one, a meteor crashes to Earth and causes a, a, just an uproar of chaos, one thing after another. As soon as the meteor crashes, wakes Godzilla up, causes a massive hurricane, and you know uncovers Mothra's egg. Mothra gets you know hatches at the same time. The meteor also awakens a new monster called Batra as we come to find out in the story, is just pretty much the evil version of Mothra. Super cool monster. Uh, but, of course, Godzilla shows yes. up and goes to attack Mothra. Batra shows up. Batra and Godzilla fight in what's one of the coolest probably fight scenes in the Heisei series. They get uh, sw yeah. swallowed yeah. up in a magma river, right? Yes. Magma river. Yes. Um, and then Mothra escapes, and she goes to ends up going to Tokyo um, <clears throat> to... Of course, you know, try and save the cosmos or the or they changed the name to the cosmos in this one. The Elias uh, fairies from the Showa era. They, are, of course, are back. But now they're called the cosmos. I don't know why they changed it, but whatever. We'll run with it. And uh, they try to save them because much like the Mothra plot, they are kidnapped and tried to be sold for fame and fortune to be in a show or put on display. Uh, major pull from the actual 61 Mothra film. 
Uh, but of course, they get rescued, you know, not rescued, but the main character who is, you know, the Japanese Indiana Jones, um, yeah, <laughs> decides he's not going to sell them, and uh, has him and his ex-wife <coughs> and his daughter, um, you know, end up going to, you know, leave, and Mothra shows up, and they say, "Hey, Mothra, stop destroying stuff." She's like, "Okay, man, I'll stop," and then she cocoons herself and turns into the new version of Mothra that we get, which is a really stellar design. And then as she um, releases from the cocoon. Batra comes back from the ocean. I guess she came out of the same area as she was sunk in. Yeah. Um, and then a great fight insinuates between the good Mothra and the evil Mothra Batra. And at the same time that this is going on, Godzilla comes erupting out of Mount Fuji because he survived the magma river because he's a freaking beast. <laughs> Makes his way right to him. And then uh, you get a fight between him and Batra, which is a great fight. But he ends up taking Batra down. Mothra steps in, saves Batra, heals Batra, turns Batra into a good guy, and the the two of them then double-team Godzilla, take him out, fly him out to sea. He, of course, kills Batra in the process and what's a great little bloody scene, and then Batra and Godzilla fall into the ocean. Mothra does the cool little symbol thing flying around, goes on top of you know, that little design of hers, and then she flies off to stop an asteroid from destroying Earth, and that's the end of the movie. It's really kind of a fantastical film, so... Uh, but pulls a lot from the 64 Mothra film, Mothra Godzilla film, pulls some things from the 61 uh, Mothra film, uh, but did really, really good. Came out in December. Uh, this one actually was the highest grossing movie of the year in Japan. It was nominated for three Japanese Academy Awards, won one of them, um, it actually won a few other awards. I can't remember um, what awards they were, but I remember it won a couple of them. Uh, Kawakita, of course, won special effects for some award I remember. Did, uh, did you say highest grossing? For, uh, that year, yeah. Highest grossing film of the year. Oh, okay. Well, I'm I'm on Wikipedia right now, and it says it was the second highest grossing film, with Jurassic Park being the first highest grossing film. Was it? The side I looked yes. at is... But I don't know. Then. This is Wikipedia, so maybe yeah, something but I, changed But I think it, it was <laughs> the highest grossing Godzilla, Godzilla movie, wouldn't it? No, no, it just says this film was the second highest grossing film in Japan in 1983, with Jurassic Park being the highest grossing. We'll need to oh. find out. Like about I said, that maybe some dude changed it an hour ago. It is Wikipedia. <laughs> True. I, I, so usually, well, this one, good, so. this one did um, uh, two hundred two billion two hundred twenty million yen, so a little over twenty million dollars um, in the box office. Sold four point two million tickets. And now it is the second highest grossing Godzilla film in Japan. Next to Shin Godzilla, it was, but now Shin Godzilla is the first, obviously. Um, so this is the second highest grossing Godzilla film. Um, so did a stellar job. Obviously, I think because of the return of Mothra and putting those two against each other really, really helped. Um, because we all, you know, Mothra returned probably as frequently as more, maybe more frequently than any of the other monsters. I mean, because we saw her in Mothra versus God, you know, her film, but Mothra versus Godzilla. She's in Ghidra. She's in. Uh, Godzilla vs. Sea Monster. She's in Destroy All Monsters. She's in Godzilla's Revenge. Um, I mean, she's a big fan favorite, especially for the girls. Uh, you, know, you know, the young girls they loved Mothra. Um, so bringing her back was pretty was a really smart move um, from Toho's part, I think, to really uh, keep the Heisei series going, growing and going. Um, and they did a really good job handling this. They feel like they they have some fantasy elements in the film that they pull from the first Rock Mothra movie itself, but it didn't go too overboard with it. Um, but I think this is a great, great uh, film. Like I said, won a couple awards. Now this was like King Ghidorah did not see a release here in America to TV or home video until the crap fest of 98 happened and TriStar <laughs> and TriStar brought um, the rest of the Heise films over here for VHS when we finally got to see this movie. Um, or most people like I said, I, I saw this before um, the 98 crap fest because I was, you know, ordering the imports. Um, Go ahead and brag. Hey, I'm going to keep Go bragging brag. every time, man. I love <laughs> video. I kind you all the way. Dude. Right. Those dudes were great. Um, I love their deals. Cause I would, I would buy four and I get the fifth free. So um, I actually still remember my first order from them was, was actually the Heisei series. God's Wars is King Ghidorah. God vs. Mothra, God vs. Meg Godzilla, God vs. Space Godzilla, and I got God vs. Destroy for free. That was that first order I had from them. Um, so I got caught up pretty quick. So it was... <laughs> See, and I never even heard of them. I think I, I've told this story, but I, these movies, 
And that's the only thing I give 98 credit for is the fact that all these movies started getting released in, in, here in the state because of 98. Right. Maybe to make up for it, but maybe TriStar wanted to apologize so they brought all these movies over. <laughs> They're like, we're sorry but, our film uh, sucks. Th- th- Here's the rest of the God's movies, movies you've been missing. <laughs> yeah. Please forgive us. Try this. And, uh, Try this. This jogged my memory and that... I, these were it was it was uh, Ghidorah and Mothra that I ordered from QVC. It was two VHSs that that I ordered, and then after that, that's when I started looking for the rest of them. Because truthfully, I did not know they were they were out there. I was like, "Ooh, what is what is this?" You know. But I think I told you guys I went crazy. That it was like a whole couple of hours of just Godzilla. Well, you know, I looked out be, with finding video that kind you because I had gone to G Fest in ninety six. I think so. It was was it ninety six or ninety? No, it was ninety seven. Had it been ninety seven? Because the the one of the films that I watched there was Gamera Two: Attack of Legion was there, and I also had seen um, a few of the other. Um, I didn't watch them, but yeah. a few of the other Heiseis were playing. Uh, but I only got to watch, um, I remember Gamer 2. And then, I can't remember, I, want to say, I think it was War of the Gargantuas, maybe. Uh, it was, was one of the other films that I saw on this big screen. But um, I had gotten, um, there was somebody from Video Kaiju there at G-Fest. And I got a catalog and went back home and ended up ordering some. That's yeah. how I found yeah. out about them. Because they didn't have a website. Oh, okay. And they, they've got one now. But I still think it's just maybe one dude that runs this thing um, because, like, I mailed or I emailed them. I want to say I emailed them last year sometime, maybe like November, and was like, hey, I need it. Can you send me a catalog? And they emailed me back. And they're like, yeah, we'll get you one as soon as we can get one printed and send out to you an updated catalog. I got it in April. I mean, we're talking months <laughs> like it took to get this catalog. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to order from you guys now anymore, you know. Um, but, uh, but back then, I mean, I they were quick, man. I would order and and I would get the movies in just two weeks um, from the time that I mailed my order out and uh, my money order, and then they'd send me. It was cool because they'd always send me whatever movies I ordered. They'd send me two or three posters, um, and then not like theatrical size posters, but like little movie promo posters, like a <clears throat> eleven by seventeens. <Yeah>. <clears throat> Excuse me. They'd send me two or three of those, and then they'd send me an updated catalog, and uh, um. And it was just super, super cool, man. So, I mean, I mowed yeah, yards for Pizza that Plus. Awesome. It's like, pff, that's all I'm doing. Like, I'm wasting yeah. my money on video that kaiju. Yeah. This dude's bomb. So, <laughs> they they severely that's helped cool. me grow in the in the, the mid and late 90s or the later 90s. Uh, my Japanese, you know, monster movie, da- you know, collection big time. I mean, I got all the Heisei Godzillas, got the entire 90 Gamma trilogy. I got. Matango, War of the Gargantuas, Frankenstein Congress of the World, both endings. Um, I mean, I got tons of stuff from them. So, pretty cool company. But, anyways, we're back on God vs. Mothra. So, um, I enjoyed this yeah. film. Who went first last time? How did we do this? I think I did. You did? Yeah. On the, yeah. On King Ghidorah? No, I wasn't here for King Ghidorah. You weren't here for King Ghidorah. That's right. Yeah. You I bailed was, on us. I was moving. You bailed on us. I was moving. <laughs> yeah. No, COVID. COVID's a good excuse. We, okay. Ruben, I, I, Ruben yeah. got a good excuse. I, then I failed. Okay. Man, I, I really tried, man. I'm like, man, I'm going to try to, man, but then as it, it approached, I'm like, man, I'm not going to be able to do this, unfortunately. And, oh, well. So I, I, it's been a while since uh, Sludge has gone first. This is the Sludge go first. All right. All right. Wow. I'll, I appreciate that. He, he never just, shuts up. I mean, what? I'll try it. I mean, <laughs> I wasted 20 minutes. We were 20 time minutes earlier. without even recording. <laughs> so, you know, I'll try and be Get quick. ready for a 30 minute, uh, yeah. 30 minute talk about, <laughs> about <laughs> and I, Yeah. And I think he admitted to liking us. Did not movie, happen I'm whatsoever. <laughs> Never did. <laughs> I will admit to liking this you know, movie, though. Oh, yeah. Yes. Here we go. Uh, this one was... I, this yeah, was, don't say that, Mark. You, you remember what he said before? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah. um, I, this one, I think, was a step up big time from um, not only God vs. King Ghidorah, but also God vs. Balante. I really enjoyed this. Bringing Mothra back. Um, while I will admit this, the design is... Uh, the and not my least, it's probably my least favorite of all the Mothras because I'm taking into account the 96 trilogy or the 90s trilogy of the Mothra movies as well. And 
everything else. But I mean, but it's still beautiful. Like this is a really good. Um, she looks great in it. But um, it, but I love the movie. Uh, it pulls so much from one of my all time favorite show of films, Moth. You know, movies Moth vs Godzilla. Yeah. That even though I mean, there's so much of it that's like it's a blatant rip off. I mean, the you know the hurricane releasing Mothra's egg and you know, you've even got the ty- you know, the business tycoon trying to make money off of the egg or the fairies and down, um, down to the mustache. I mean, I, I, that's right. I, I was just He's waiting got mustache for mustache even. He does, dude. I was just waiting for him to open up a closet and just have like millions of dollars just laying in a little cabinet, you <laughs> yeah. know? Um, so, I mean, it, it was very blatantly pulled from Mothra versus Godzilla. And then there was parts of it that was very blatantly pulled from, um, Mothra and I felt the only thing that they really added to that to those two w- for this one was b- the Batra aspect and Batra ended up being I think one of the greatest design monsters of the entire Heisei series and and Showa yeah. I mean you know we've we've seen the evil mech you know Godzilla with the mech Godzilla an evil Mothra is a great idea mm-hmm. and they just went top notch I think even the larva form because I mean to be honest, the larva form of Mothra, kind of puny. You know, what I mean, like can't really do much yeah. of anything. Yeah, it doesn't look the design itself. You know, you see him, and I'm like, what's he gonna do? Uh, what's yeah. she gonna do? But when you see you know, Batra, like, nah. shoot, Batra yeah. looks like she would tear you up. And that first fight yep. with him and Godzilla is amazing. And it's like the you know the last time we get a full underwater fight sequence like we do in this one was back in Godzilla vs. Sea Monster. And this is far superior to that. Um it's very oh, yeah. intense, brutal, um, you know, hands-on fighting with the two of them. So it's super, super great. And then when you see Batra in its you know uh Imago form or the adult form, freaking superb, man. Superb. I mean all the you know, the spikes and horns coming off of it, even the the side spikes on its abdomen glowing red to match its eyes. I mean just yeah. such a phenomenal design. Um, and it worked really well as a, as a villain to Mothra, but then also worked as a villain to Godzilla in a superb way. Um, so I thought it was a great creature to add to it. I like the fact that they gave Godzilla or Mothra a little bit more powers. You know, she's got, even though, as we've, I've said before, I'm not huge on the constant issue of the Heisei series, in my opinion, being more, you know, rays shooting at each other versus physical action, but giving her the ability to shoot, you know, an energy beam from her antenna, uh, I think helped because then it gave her a little bit more of an edge to fight Godzilla, um, which was really, really cool. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I love the movie. The characters were pretty likable. You know, I like the characters. I love the Cosmos characters or the Elias characters. Um, they were always very unique um, as as f- for the Mothra character itself. So I, I, I really dug it. Um, I th- this movie was super fun for me. My only actual complaints for this one would again be the things I liked being also the things I think liked. Um, they could have really went a little more original. There was, it was just, I mean, it was such a blatant ripoff of two movies that they didn't really do anything, but add Batra. And I really would have liked it to have been like, come on. I mean, you guys have wrote some great movies. I would have liked some, a little, a little more originality and not so much blatant ripoff because you, the opening sequence is a straight ripoff of Indiana Jones. It's like they were, they were trying to be Indiana Jones at the beginning of the film. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I would have liked a little more creativity out of the crew, um, especially Kazuki Omori. You know I mean? Come on, dude. You gave us King Ghidra in a time travel movie with three, you know, gizmos you know like yeah, you could gizmos. <laughs> you could have given us a little more originality on this one so other than that my only other real complaint for this film was actually the godzilla suit the water suit not so much the the rest of the scenes because the suit looks great a little more slim down softer tone more he, he's he's going towards that, that hero move kind of like he did in this you know in the, the late 60s and 70s as you see the suit design change as they start to work moving him towards from being a straight bad guy to more kind of a neutral bad guy to a straight good guy. That's kind of the middle ground here. So, I mean, I like the design, but with the the suit they use in the water scenes, the suit was kind of flimsy. Like when Mothra bites his tail and he swings that tail up, you can see the, the vinyl or the rubber just bend. You know what I mean? Like yeah. real yeah. far outside, almost like it's outstretched skin and bent like, 
so the the water suit I did not like whatsoever. It was just way too flimsy of a of a suit. Um, and then of course the only other issue, but you he is fighting two two flying monsters, um, is you know the amount of radioactive rays coming out of Godzilla versus getting physical. You know, with with because I love that. That's why I'm so excited about the next film. Like God, there's some Godzilla. I'm stoked because there's so, there's a lot of hands on in that. Um, but that's really my only complaint. Oh, man. that's man, that's a top notch movie. Oh, it right is. There, I mean, I definitely yeah. love this one. I enjoyed this one. It has been a while since I watched this one last. Um, and I was like, man, I kind of yeah. forgot how much I did. Same here. You know, I just enjoyed this one. Is it going to be my first pick of the Heisei to watch? Absolutely not. But it's definitely. I mean, I would pick it way over Bailante or King Ghidorah or Space Godzilla. Um, this is the middle ground film for Hazy for me. So it's very enjoyable movie. I do enjoy it. If it's on, I'm going to watch it. I may pick it again soon because it has been a while. Cause I forgot how good they did with Mothra in this. Um, I think once I yeah. got to the, the, the Mothra trilogy that, that came later in the nineties, I think I got a little spoiled when it comes to Mothra because Leo, the main Mothra that's in all three of those really spoiled me because no other Mothra tops Leo, like not even the Mothra we got in God of King or God's King of the monsters, I think is his, freaking boss as leo is in that trilogy but uh but this was enjoyable i loved it just a few special effects things seemed to bother me a little bit and other than that the writing i mean it wasn't bad writing but it was so far from original like it just was too much ripoffs even though the movies they ripped off are two of my favorite films from the show era um yeah i really this is almost like uh like a remake a remake is funny a remake just inserted into this timeline. Yeah, it really is. If that makes really any is. sense to you, you know, and it was called Godzilla versus Mothra originally, you know, in Japan, it was called Godzilla versus Mothra. They changed it here because of course, you know, we already, we had Godzilla versus Mothra. Japan had Godzilla versus the thing, right? I believe. No, it was so versus the other way first. around. The other yeah. way around. Right? Yeah. yeah. And what in the Japan, they were, they were going to call it Mothra versus Godzilla, but they'd already had the original one, 64, was called Mothra vs. Godzilla, so they just switched the title card around. So it was Godzilla vs. Mothra. Yeah, inside. gotcha. So, like, this one, and so, I mean, I don't know. It's just, just like, to me, it's a remake inserted into this t- into this storyline. Yeah. Because, you know, this whole series is all connected. You know? Um, like, there was a scene where one of them said, Godzilla came out of Mount Fuji. And in a great it kind of bothered me. I even mentioned it. Yeah, he comes out of Mount Fuji and they're surprised. Like, how did he do that? I'm like, he's already done it before. Yeah. He's come out of Mount <laughs> Fuji before. You know, why are you surprised? You know, it's Godzilla. But uh yeah, I think it was just a remake kind of deal insert. It was. Well, and so Mark I agree and with you. Mark brought uh, pulled something up on his phone. I totally forgot about it, but that's correct, what you pulled, Mark, that this was actually originally supposed to have been um before they did this one they were going to do mothra versus began um which for those yes. who've never heard the name <coughs> excuse me began is the main monster that we get in super godzilla for the super nintendo um because this was going to be a solo yep. mothra film and they were afraid of not you know having a mothra fight this new super monster that mothra wasn't as popular as a character as Godzilla to be able to carry your own film so they end up just rehashing everything and making Godzilla versus Mothra is what they end up doing right. and then we end up getting began yeah. two years later in Super that Godzilla been cool. right? yeah. which is the most it would have been cool oh yeah because I think began when it comes to the Godzilla fandom that character is probably the most wanted non-used character ever I mean because he's he's yeah. was supposed to fight against Mothra I think in like there was a um uh, one of the original scripts, I think for Godzilla versus space Godzilla, maybe even um, what, but there was another script where they're going to try and bring began into a Godzilla film got scrapped. And I think that's what ended up being got space Godzilla, uh, but you know, so we got him in super Godzilla, of course, super Godzilla turned into space Godzilla as well, but we've never gotten began and began has been a huge fan favorite, right. you know, from the beginning. So well, yeah. I think that might account for, for drawing from other movies to, to put this together once they made a, a decision to not use him. Probably, yeah, probably so. It's funny. This is one of these movies that's gone through some changes because I was reading that they wanted Mothra to actually get killed by Godzilla, and then they were going to make her Mecha Mothra. Wow. Oh yeah. Wow. That's yeah. right. That was yeah because that was yeah. supposed to have been yeah the next film to this. But then they said no. We already did that. 
You know, we already did that. So let's not rip that off. Let's just rip off the whole 64. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's just do it. it. Let's just take the whole film and reshoot it. So. <laughs> Oh. You know, no, that's not original at all. So what we'll do is we'll take Indiana Jones and uh, the Showa Mothra movies, and we'll just combine them all. And that's not a rip off at all. No, nope. you know, like, it'll, really? it'll work. It's only a rip off if you got yeah, one movie. Work. If you got three, it's not a rip off <laughs> yeah. at all. Mm, that's and that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. But, but that's me. Uh, I mean, so I I, yeah. I I enjoyed it. I had a few things that I you know I was kind of like eh, on, but overall I thought this was great. It was fun. Um, I, you know, I really, really enjoyed this, this movie. So Mark did good. Did good. I, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I really liked it. I mean, uh, obviously now that we're, we're doing these podcasts and as soon as you, you know, the moment you turn it on, you start looking at things and, you know, you got the Indiana Jones character and, you know, and he pulls out the statue and naturally, you know, the place is going to fall apart right. and everything's going to yeah. fall down. But the thing that got me when I first started, I was like, is that not sunlight shining down on him? But yet he's got to turn around, crawl through a tunnel, and go up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, and all these steps yeah. that are falling apart. Why don't you just go up through that uh, sunlight right there where the hole is? But a hey, is all right. I, I I did enjoy it. I thought the special effects were pretty decent on it. There was a couple spots that um, originally in the beginning, uh, some buildings were falling down, and and I saw people running right through roofs and stuff that. They, uh, they really yeah, they really yeah. didn't check yeah. them you know real good and, uh but i think overall i think uh i enjoyed the movie i enjoyed the 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 characters um uh, the the actors i thought were were pretty decent and you know enough for me to sit and, and and enjoy it and stay into it and and not get cheesed out on anything and uh which were sometimes you do with some of these toho movies but um uh, you know one of the other questions I had is, is, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the underwater scenes. I thought the underwater scenes were pretty good, with the exception of nothing changed in Godzilla's ray uh, or Batra's. I right, mean, right. Everything just, that was going on above the water was exactly the same under the water. I was like, how does that work? How does you know you're looking at it and thinking? But I think overall, um, good movie. I mean. Uh, uh, I enjoyed it and, and uh, stayed right glued to it. Didn't get uh, pulled away or distracted or, uh, or or any of those. Man, things. now I don't know how you couldn't have gotten distracted because you were the only one to watch the dub version, right? I, I was. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I cannot stand what. How old is the lady, Ruben? You remember? So you got the little girl Midori in the mm -hmm. movie, mm -hmm. Indiana right. Jones' daughter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's dubbed by like a 27-year-old right. woman <laughs> or something like that. Oh, my goodness. I'm glad I didn't watch that one. <laughs> oh, man, it is horrible. Like, I, it never, like, even watching the Japanese version, that the, it comes to the scene where Mothra finally, you know, mm -hmm. comes out of her cocoon, yeah. and Midori, her actual line is, it's pretty, is what she says. Yeah. But as soon as I saw it, watching the Japanese version, all I could hear was that dang twenty-seven-year-old woman from the Jap <laughs> the the dub version going nice because that's what she says? Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. oh my god! <laughs> well, that's that's funny because that's what um that's what it says on the on the subs too because she says something and it's just as funny because it says nice and I was like, why would she say like oh nice? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, so that is funny. okay. Well, but, then that verifies. So the Sony subs, if that if it says nice because we talked about this before uh -huh, the show. Yeah. Um, then no, the Sony subs are not the same as the Toho Blu-ray right. subs, right? Because the Toho Blu-rays okay. do do yeah. say it's pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You know, yeah, it definitely. I remember that part. It should, definitely said nice. Yeah, so it's it's funny. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's a. It, I, I don't want to say a step up. I mean, but the color, I you know, the version, the colors that are in the movie are bright. They're yeah. I mean, it's such a different type of atmosphere. I don't know. Just not that yeah, dark this dark movie that's funny you were say that because this movie can stand alone even though it's in a it's in a series but you could throw this movie in and not know what went on with a biolante godzilla you know return of godzilla yeah exactly yeah exactly. Ghidorah, and you can watch this movie and not need to know anything that happened exactly for right. the next couple of movies you do need to know Oh yeah, because they know, follow right, right in line, right. especially so, with the introduction yeah, of the but of the sun. This, this one can't stand alone. Yeah, this one can stand alone easily. Um, you don't need to know what's going on, you know. So right, that's a plus. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, so, Ruben, what about you, man? Yeah, all right. You're already, you're already going? Yeah. Let's hear what you got to say. Oh, okay. That's true. All right. I'm already started. Well, I, I, I like the movie. You know, um, I, too, like like you guys said, my the thing I didn't like about it was I thought the story was not, um, it was, it's been done. I guess it's the word that I, the words I'm going to use. It's been done, which kind of distracted me a little bit. I like the characters and some of them were even, you know, me and RJ were laughing because some of the characters are just so over the top. And um, I think he was the minister of the environment, the, the older man. He's, he was in Godzilla 54. I can't remember his name. Takarata. He's an older gray haired man. Yeah, Takarada. And he was just like, oh my, you know, it was just like panicking the whole movie. Whenever it was a scene with him, he was just over the top, like, oh, it's the end of the world. You know, and he was just, <laughs> I, and I thought, I found it comical. Like, oh, first, first we get a meteorite, then we get a hurricane, and now we got Godzilla. Yeah. Oh, and he's yeah, just, oh, he's yeah. just oh not Takarada. I know yeah, you're he talking about. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. That guy is great. Yeah. Huh. He's awesome. It's so funny to watch him. I'm like, man, this is just funny. And then it was it was super ironic whenever uh I think we I expected I was like, oh, this guy's probably gonna freak out. And the next scene was the only scene where he wasn't freaking out. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what the heck? I was like, every other he was thing just perfectly was, calm. And he just <laughs> yeah, it, lo- looking at him made me anxious, you know? So <laughs> Yeah. So I mean that that's the only part that really bothered me in the movie. I liked I like the, the the creature, uh, Batra's design is just awesome. Matter of fact, it reminded me of Bag. Of, um, I, I say Bagon. You 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 pronounce it different. You said Bagon. Is that Bagan. how you pronounce it? Lunch? Bagan. Okay, I always Bagan. say Bagon. I don't know why, but I saw some of that in in there, and I'm like, hey, that's pretty cool. Even though this is, you know, years a couple of years before they actually came up with the design or whatever, but I like Batra's design. <clears throat> I liked how Mothra had an opposite, and it was pretty cool. I thought that was, I said, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I love you that. Know, inserting, inserting that into the movie made the story w- better. In other words, it made it more original, having Bygone, having bygone in there. And I, I said, man, that's just, I, I like that, you know? And uh, uh, I liked the score. The score was awesome. You know, oh yes, as, as usual. Yeah. yeah, Akira Fukube yeah. back again, yeah. man. He kills it. He's yeah, so good with these you know, It's just you know, it's just when you see his name, you just know you're gonna get an awesome yep score. So I, I love the score. Um, the characters, I I really like them. I really, and I, you know, I kind of dug the little sub story of the the father daughter. You know, they're divorced, and you know, he, he loves his daughter, but he didn't get to see her, and and you know, she kind of tries to reform him you know because he's a basically he's a thief in this movie yeah <laughs> you know um and he actually steals the cosmos and it's gonna make money yep a lot you know, of he's gonna sell them to he's yeah. gonna sell them to a, i assume his american company from the guy he was talking to i don't know if they ever mentioned who that guy was or who he worked for no but, i don't think they uh, did you know but, no, definitely looked right I, I don't think they did but he was a, you know, he was on his way out to go deliver him when his ex-wife and his daughter show up, you know, and convince him to uh, turn over a new leaf. And, and I thought that was cool, you know. I thought that was neat. And, and plus, uh, uh, that little girl was just adorable. Not she the twenty-seven-year-old yeah. dubbed one, yeah. You not know, when he listened to her dub. No, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, not, not the dub version, but uh, you know, we watched the Japanese and just the. Uh, subtitle so i like that um i'm trying to think if there's anything i really d- disliked other than the story and there's really not um th- this is a, a, a good movie and it's a standalone even though it's in a series like i mentioned before so you can watch this without having to know like well, well what is that you know there was no reference to Biolante. there was no reference to return of godzilla there was no reference to king Ghidorah, other than the fact that I guess now, well, no, they don't even have the Godzilla defense. Yeah, no, no, that's no, not to the next no. man. They don't even have that yet, you know. So, um, I like that it's a standalone. Yes, it's in this. I call it a timeline. Uh, in this time, in, the, in this icy timeline, that's going to go all the way to destroy you. 
and it's pretty cool. And it's pretty cool seeing this cast of Godzilla veterans. I mean, that cast is just chock. I mean, you got people there from Final Wars. You got people that you know that they you know this is when they were younger, of course. You have Godzilla two thousand guy in there. You have uh, the guy from Final Wars in there, the Prime Minister or whatever he is from Final War. I mean, you have all these people that you recognize from other Godzilla movies. Oh yeah, from the Showa, and especially from, yeah. yeah. So in this I film, was, it's chock yeah. full yeah of returning actors. Yeah, yeah, it's just chock full of veteran actors and actors that are going to be in future Godzilla movies. Yep. That may, maybe this is their first appearance in a Godzilla movie. And uh, uh, I, I thought that was pretty cool. It was pretty cool seeing a couple of them that, of course, when we saw, you know, they were a lot younger than they were when they appeared in future movies. You know, um, this was 92, but when Godzilla 2000, I mean, the guy just looked a lot older. Yeah. Um, yeah. I forget the character's name, but he just looks a lot older in Godzilla 2000 than he does in this one. Was this it, one uh, I told RJ, I said he almost he almost looks buff, you know, he, like he does. works out uh, or something. Is this Ando? Was right? that his name? Ando, yeah, I think that was his name was Ando. Yeah, yeah. The the company representative, or yeah, whatever, yeah. That by the way, our, yeah, I'm, uh, me and RJ mentioned they go on that expedition, and uh, and and you know they're in their in their hiking gear, and for some reason he wore a suit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, to be on the island. Yeah, RJ mentioned that he goes, "Look, he's wearing a suit. Why is he wearing a suit?" <laughs> you know, I thought that was kind of RJ thought I was got his little alarm clock that he has. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, it's definitely the goofy. Yeah, yeah, his little alarm clock. So all in all, man, I, I you know, um, I like this movie. I gave it a three and a half stomp, and I really enjoyed it. Um, there's not really many negatives. I think anybody can sit down and enjoy this movie. And uh, will not be disappointed at the end at all. Oh, definitely. Especially with the creature designs. I think the creature designs, and my, my I mean, I mean, and that underwater fight scene is my favorite. Oh, it's so good. I mean, I thought it that was so, so awesome. I said, man, it's so. I said, that's it. That that's. I said, I don't know. You know, I, I watched the rest of the fight. It, it, all the fight scenes, all the monster fight scenes in this. I, I like them all. Don't get me wrong. I mean, they're all great. Yeah, they, they did really well. That underwater fight scene was. Awesome. Yeah, the monster fights are top notch in this movie. Especially and, considering uh, so, you've got you know the two flying you know Mothra and Batra, which are flying monsters, and so they yeah. really ran almost entirely by wires. Um, they did a really yeah. good job. Which which only show up a couple of times, uh, you know, the wires at that least. Uh, RJ noticed one, and it was really just a spotlight. The spotlight went on it, and and, and another thing that I know that we noticed is. We were watching, and when Mothra's coming into shore, and they said, well, we're going to, they start shooting all these missiles at it, but almost none of them hit Mothra. They're just, just they make, shooting. they make the stormtroopers look like yeah. a perfect aim. I mean, they were shooting at anywhere but Mothra, like you said. Oh, man. <laughs> See, now, yeah. but now that makes me, now that makes me a little, really interested. To, I'm, I'm going to go back and watch my Sony one now, because in the Japanese one, they do that on purpose. They talk about in beforehand, of not shooting Mothra directly, but trying to move Mothra away instead of tracking, no, you know, shooting this one, around. They, they just saw they, yeah, in the Sony version, they basically just open fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't yeah. say anything about avoiding her. Ah, well, but wow. when when the the Bastra uh, larva comes originally, mm -hmm. uh, they go to attack him also in. Can't, they hit him about three times after I have about four oh, yeah. shots. So yeah. the, the Japanese self defense yeah. force is the oh, worst. Yeah. So. I mean, they they do give storm artists right. Like stormtroopers <laughs> shoot better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, but uh, that, that that's basically all I got to say about that. So uh, RJ, what about you, man? RJ. Okay, so um, once again, I think I'm going to be in a little bit of a minority here, but not so much in a bad way. Um, so I gave it a three. Um, I'm gonna be honest. This movie uh took me completely by surprise. It did not go the way that I thought I was gonna go whatsoever. So, and I think part of that is due to uh the title differences. Um, there is a big difference in the titles depending on which one you look at. So, I was under the impression that it was called Godzilla and Mothra: The Battle for Earth, which it is. 
But so I was like, oh, sweet. Like, of course, like Mothra and Godzilla are like, they're going to they're gonna team up. Like, this is going to be cool. Like, they always team up. You know what I mean? And so, I mean, so once again, I, I'm i going into these pretty blind when I watch them. Uh, I watched Godzilla as a kid, as you all know. Um, and I didn't care two reds butts about the story whatsoever. You know what I mean? Like, I right. just wanted to see Godzilla destroy stuff and fight monsters, right? So I wasn't really paying attention much to the story. <laughs> so when y'all talk about that this is an exact copy of Mothra 64, I I don't really, honestly don't remember Mothra 64 at all. So I I, I don't know. It could be a shot-for-shot shot remake for all I know. <laughs> but, um, uh, so I went into it. It's not far blind. from it. I can tell you that much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I went into it pretty blind. Uh, this movie took me by surprise and confused me quite a bit. If there's a way I could sum it up, uh, this seems it's a very anti Godzilla movie, I think. Anyway, Godzilla is not the not the star of the show in this one. He's beat up upon. He's teamed up on. Nobody likes him in this. Like it's just like I'm like God dang. I'm like this is how is this a Godzilla film? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this is kind of like because like I said, I I assumed that I thought it was gonna go that Godzilla and Mothra were gonna team up and fight the evil Batra. But I was sitting there watching Godzilla and uh, Mothra and Batra team up on Godzilla. And I was like, wait, I was like, what's <laughs> happening here? So, yeah, that confused me a bit. Overall, though, I enjoyed it. Um, I would have to say <laughs> I, I agree with you on the sense that I think this is probably this is probably one of the most uh, solid so far that we watched. Uh, just overall was good. Um King Adora, you know, I, I don't have the same opinion Sludge has on it, thinking that it's absolutely, you know, awful and such but i i can see its flaws it has its quirks um it is hard to believe that it's the same it's the same director you said right like well, the the, the director of king adora um wrote this one. Oh, okay, okay. different well that's still program. that's still a little surprising because they're very different uh in writing i i would say they're very different style uh King of Dora kind of, I feel like, went all out with it, and this one was a bit more tame. That's why I was um, so confused by it. Like, I was I was expecting more, because, I mean, he yeah. did. He just ripped off t- three previous, or two previous Toho films <laughs> is all he did. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It was just, uh, it was overall good, though. Um, but to be specific, I loved Batra. I thought Batra was super cool. Uh, a little bit of a funny thing to show how, how long it's been and how, how much of the story I, you know, didn't get. Uh, my dad was like, oh, like, because we both didn't remember a lot of this film. Uh, it was basically like we both watched it for the first time. He was like, I don't remember any of this. And I was like, I need to. But um, <laughs> was I was kind of like, he was like, is this the one with Batra? And I was like, no, no, no. I was like, that's not until a Millennium one. And he kind of just looked at me like, OK, or whatever. And then I realized <laughs> I was I was confusing Batra with Mega Gears. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so I was like, oh, I was like, I'm not thinking of Batra. I'm thinking of Mega Gears. I'm like, this is the one where Batra is. Um, but I like overall I like Batra a lot. I think he, it's a cool concept, kind of the the evil Mothra, um, or I guess in this they call him the Black Mothra in yeah. this one. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that dub is correct. Maybe uh, seen as problematic nowadays. But anyway, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, but um, yeah. So I I, I liked it though. I, I I liked it a lot. Sorry, I think I'm talking too loud for the mic. <laughs> um, I like Batra a lot. I like the underwater scene a lot, as my dad said. Um, that was pretty cool. That was just kind of one of those things that, I mean, obviously they did. It it looked like it, but they obviously didn't film that underwater because Godzilla was moving at the same speed as normal. Um, right. Uh, and it, plus, being in a suit underwater is probably. I mean, let's be real. They'd probably be dead by the end of the scene. So. Yeah. Um, uh, but it was cool. I, I I guess they, I don't know. I was just thinking about how they filmed it. I assumed they filmed it in a room that was super blue, dark, I guess. And then they overlaid water effects on it. I don't know. It worked well, though. I thought it was super cool. Um, yeah, those would be really the only two, like, like uh, I guess, specific likes. But oh, I just put that it was overall a good film. Um, like I guess I dislikes. I, it was pretty strange that it was a anti Godzilla film. I felt like, like I said, like everyone was just kind of ganging up on Godzilla in this one. It was definitely more of a Mothra film. So I can see how yeah, I, yeah. maybe there was a. I think there was definitely maybe a. Uh, I guess a, a lack of a good transition from their initial idea of it being an original, like a, a solo Mothra film, to going to a Godzilla film. It kind of feels like Godzilla's kind of an afterthought in this one. Uh, it seems it seems that way anyway. Um, and then another, uh, this is another small gripe that I had with it, was 
that little girl calling Mothra Mr. Mothra. That's very confusing uh, yeah. because yeah. Mothra is known that Mo- Mothra is known to be a girl. At least yeah. I assume. So I'm like, why are you calling him Mr. Mothra? Like or her? See, she's got me confused. This is just <laughs> Mothra has a bit. Mothra has a bit of a. Uh, I think of a of a gender. Uh, a gender dysphoria thing going on <laughs> in this yeah. one, at least uh, perception-wise, uh, from other people. So, um, yeah, that was a, that was the thing that kind of bothered me because I was like, "What?" I was like, "I thought Mothra had already been established as a female." female. So yeah, why is this? Always. Why is this little girl gonna say Mr. Mothra? Like, in, I don't know if it's maybe just like an innocent kid thing, and I, I'm I'm a you know 22 year old man that's thinking too much about it. But still, I, it just bothered me a little bit. Um, but yeah. That's really all I had to say about that. It surprised me for sure. Like I said, it did not go the way that I thought it was. I thought, once again, I was going to see Godzilla and Mothra, good old tag team, teaming up on the evil Batra. And, you know, next thing I know, uh, Mothra and Batra are throwing Ferris wheels on Godzilla. So, they, yeah. So, it was, so it, was a, it was a little strange. It was a little bit of a strange experience. It was not what, yeah, I, interesting it was not what I expected. interesting setting for that fight. In the yes. Part. Yeah. <laughs> So. I love the setting though. I love that. That's that's awesome. I can see why it's kind of on the cover. Um, it, it it is really cool, you know, with the lights and all that. So I always love the setting. I I love I love Japan. So in general, it's always going to be a good setting for a Godzilla film. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah. So that's that's really my take on it. It was a. Uh, uh, I I love the like I said the music. Uh, of course, the music is is great. Um, especially I love Mothra's theme, and uh, I actually I just watched uh. Uh, my girlfriend had visited for the weekend, and we we had just watched 2014 the last time we were together. So we watched King of the Monsters over this past weekend, um, and so hearing Mothra's theme like kind of back to back is is super awesome. I forgot how how it makes it just that much more awesome when it appears in King of the Monsters. Uh, so I feel like I bring up King of the Monsters every every uh, every episode, oh, but it's, it's so dang worth it. It's okay. It's, it's just totally it's just so it. dang. I I I I tell I I was talking to my dad the other day. I was like, I cannot believe this movie exists. Like I just I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just like like yeah, it has its quirks, but man, this is probably the best Godzilla movie that we could have asked for from the MonsterVerse. I don't know how they're gonna top it. I honestly, know, but man. You got people. I, the I fans don't know how. That... I just I. Love so it, it doesn't feel jumbled. It doesn't, you know, because you have like it could have been a Spider Man three instance where you know people come. I mean, I love Spider Man three, but still, you know, with oh, Sandman geez. and Green Goblin no. and Venom, and you know, there's a lot Evo, lost in Spider Man in, in the translation. Yeah, there's a lot. I, I but on the on the topic of it being, it's jumbling a lot. King of right. the Monsters jumbled a lot, but I felt like they did it extremely well in a good way. Like it wasn't like oh I forgot this monster was here. It was like oh I forgot this monster was here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's um, I mean, it's the ultimate so, show of movie <laughs> in my opinion. Like oh yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. it's it's like the movie that they wanted to make in the sixties. You know what yeah. I mean? Like uh, yep. it's just it's just fantastic. Um, but anyway, yeah that's um, yeah that's really what I gotta say about that one. I, I overall I enjoyed it. I gave it a three. I gave it the lowest. Everyone three point five. I gave it a three, but not because of anything really bad it was just kind of it was a standard uh good enjoyable Godzilla movie it, unlike the past ones actually I would say that you know there was one or two things that really bothered me this one just had a few small things that I looked past yeah I said um, just a few yeah a few small so quirks yeah so yeah a few small quirks with uh even like usually the special effects in the past ones were were pretty uh pretty janky but this one there was only like one scene where you could clearly see a green screen with a uh, Mothra flying over the bridge or whatever right um, and then of course the, the string incident with batcher but I, that was they kind of did that to themselves because they put the bright spotlight over it but if it wasn't for that you know it'd be fine it was uh and i do actually agree with you sludge on mothra's design it is i know this sounds weird for a saying a you know a godzilla movie from the 90s it's a little too cartoony for me it yeah. looks a uh, little too unrealistic uh it's overly uh it I, mothra doesn't look real godzilla looks real but Mothra doesn't really look real. I think they went a little. The larva. They tried to go a little too bright. But I think the problem was, I mean, when you look at the show of Mothra, who was still a very colorful, you know, creature, they weren't. They were more dulled colors. Right. This is very, very bright. And this Mothra, I feel like, looks like a giant toy, kind of, uh, which is a little unfortunate. Um, Because, like I said, I mean, I know it sounds weird. Uh, you know complaining about that but godzilla looks fantastic i think the larva even looks fantastic i think it's just it, it was a struggle in and of itself with trying to make a giant fuzzy moth look real i mean it's going to be hard uh you know with godzilla you have scales and you know so it, it's 
I don't know. That's just I. But I agree with you on on that sentiment of uh, of the design being a little a little unimmersive. But you know, it's actually kind of a little uh, unsettling. I would say it's kind of weird seeing such a big, large, fuzzy uh, moth. <laughs> it's a little yeah. unsettling, especially a bright one. Um, but you know, uh, like I said, just a few small things that uh, I could look past for this one. I overall, I sat there and I enjoyed it. And I I also like the uh, the human aspects. I thought that I agree that the characters were pretty likable. Um, there was a few quirks here and there, but you know you can always expect that. So uh, yeah, I enjoyed it overall. Yeah, I mean it's a good film, man. I mean yes. it's, it's it's that perfect to me. I think it's the perfect middle ground for the Heisei series. Super enjoyable. Um, like I said, you heard it from all of us. I mean, what little negativity we have isn't even you know it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah, you know I mean it's now, uh, now I now I have a conspiracy theory. Uh-oh. I was telling RJ about this last night about this movie. I'm thinking Mothra purposely told Batra, "You get the front end." <laughs> this is true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you get yeah. you get the front end. I'll get the tail. Don't worry, everything will be all right. <laughs> You'll be fine. Batra is, like, yeah. Batra is like, wait a minute, isn't that where his beam comes from and everything? <laughs> oh no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Oh man, that was yeah. I have to say that was awesome, especially like how Mothra just showed like Batra just straight up died, and Mothra just showed little to no remorse. Like she just kept, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it was hilarious that Mothra just lets go, and both Godzilla and Batra just fall. Like, not, yeah, not, not I don't even well. like. <laughs> yeah. It was like. Didn't you just go out of your way to like heal yeah. Batra and save Batra? Exactly. And now that's you're what like, I mean. Screw you, man. I ain't doing it twice. That's, you're done. That's what I mean. <laughs> I was so confused. I, I felt like usually you can get a, a feel for what the monsters are thinking. I don't know. That sounds weird, but I honestly had no idea. Mothra just seemed kind of like a straight up like killing machine in this one. It was kind of yeah. weird, honestly. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was pretty weird. I was like, what like what is going on? All I know is she set up Batra yep. big time. Twice, Batra, twice yeah. Yeah, because twice. a Batra got bit in the neck by Godzilla and then got atomic blasted. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, my theory is it was all planned. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll be your friend. I'll be your friend. Yeah, we're friends now. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's all uh, good. Yeah, you go first. You go first. And they're discussing that, the plan. You so know? maybe, yeah. you know, maybe there's, there's more than meets the eye to what I was seeing. Maybe... Uh, Godzilla and Mothra did team up after all. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right yep. That's awesome. So yeah, so for us, we've all kind of talked about our scores. This one, you know, we gave overall a three and a half uh, as far as stop rating this time around. So it's a great film. Definitely an enjoyable watch. One of the more fun watches of the Heisei series. Um, and Ruben said, right, I mean, it's kind of a standalone. Even though Heisei yes. is a continual story or a continual series, this one really does stand yeah, alone. Art. So it's, story arc. That's that's the what I was looking for. A story mm-hmm. arc. Right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then this one's definitely worth the watch. Super, super, super good. So you guys got anything else on this one? Yep. Nope. I'm good on this end. I'm good. Good as well. Right on. So next week, of course, we're going to be back. Well, uh, we won't have RJ. Uh, but the rest of the, the three of us will be back and we'll be doing Troll Hunter, yes. a great Norwegian found film giant monster movie that is just an absolute blast. I love I've watched it twice now. I told you that. Have you? No, have oh, you. God, I love this movie, man. It's <laughs> oh, so man. good. That sounds I know I don't do those, but that sounds cool. I uh, what do you call it? I love found footage films. So even no matter how bad they are, usually I love them. So, oh, dude, this one sounds, is I've, I've heard of it. And it oh, seems it's so like good. it's pretty cool. It so, is very, 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 nice. very good movie. Yes, it is. Super good movie. Sweet. So the concept is great. Yeah, they handle that. it great. Um, it's it's awesome. It is so awesome. Um, so we'll do that one. And then, of course, we'll be back next month. Um, we're, of course, we're going to come back with Godzilla. RJ, will you be with us next month? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Things are looking like they may be changing, but we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully, I would like to, but... We'll see. I mean, I could always call in too. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Uh, oh, that's true. We, we can do what we just did now. We have what yeah. we're doing. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So we'll uh, make... Oh, but we won't have the mic though. I could. I mean, I, I'm looking into getting a mic soon anyway, so maybe I could. But yeah, I mean, I don't know, but I would like to. So let's see. Okay. Oh. We'll make sure. Yeah. We'll, oh, yeah. One way or another, we'll make sure. You're, I'm gonna be. Yeah. I'm gonna be in a minority. As hopefully he can't do it because that means he's got a job in San Antonio, and true. he won't be around. Yeah. True. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Well, so we'll do it again. You know, hopefully, 
hopefully you have a job in San Antonio, but then hopefully you'll also be able to join the next Godzilla movie because it'd yeah, be great. That's, for, that's to, true. He he can do re- we can do a remote thing. Yeah, he, we'll do it that he way. He really likes this mic. He really likes this mic that you recommended. Yeah, and I'm he's gonna get getting one myself. Uh, it's super <laughs> yeah. good for the price. So, so yeah. So we'll, next month we'll be back with um, the next Godzilla film, Godzilla versus Mega Godzilla Two. Uh, this is a blast for the Hazy series. It's gonna be it's yeah. super 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 great one. And then we won't spill the beans till next month. But we got something really cool special coming up for you guys next month. Oh, so uh, it's gonna be a blast. We've already talked about it, and um, you guys, I think, are gonna like it. So. But uh, all right, great episode. Again, we'll see you back next week for Troll Hunter, and then see you next month for Godzilla versus Mech Godzilla, and then something special coming your all's way that I think you guys will really enjoy. And uh, courtesy, yeah, I'm really of, excited about it. Yeah, yeah. courtesy of Ruben. So yeah, this, this one's is, this Ruben's is, idea. Yes. yes. So <clears throat> it's gonna be really, really cool. So get out the popcorn. Oh, you're gonna need it for that one. It's gonna yes. be great. All right. Well, again, thank you guys so much. This is Sludge and Mark and RJ. And you got me, Ruben. Y'all have a good night. All right. We have a call. Get to the chopper!